And that is the shuttle, I believe. Tom Jones, is that it? Yes, that's the orbiter Atlantis, and it's headed straight in from the south towards Edwards Air Force Base. The pilots have to make one big looping spiral to line up uh, with runway 22. So that's in the last five minutes when they take over manual control. And you talked about feeling the wind. I'm guess they're guessing they're getting low enough now to where, does the thing shake, rattle, and roll? Is it a smooth ride on a day like this, or what? Well, they're still hypersonic right now. They're actually about Mach 5 or so, and so there's not a lot of rumble yet. But once they get down to the last five minutes of the flight as they begin to approach the, the uh, sound barrier, uh, it's like an old bread truck going down a dirt road with a bunch of potholes. It's uh, really a shake, rattle, and roll kind of ride. <laughs> it's not a new vehicle, Trace Gallagher. In fact, it's getting on up there. <laughs> Well, you know, Tom's being generous because really one of the analogies he used a long time ago is it's like flying a brick with wings. I mean, there's no way to really control this thing except with the flaps. There's no I mean, there's no power, so you kind of have to glide in there. And, and I think we're kind of missing the bigger story here. One of the big stories is the fact that, yeah, these guys have been up there for uh, two weeks, but there's one person on that flight, Sunita Williams, who's been up on the space station for six months, and she switched out. Clayton Anderson is now on board the International Space Station, and, and Sonny Williams is now on board the shuttle coming back for the first time in six months, and she said the first thing she wants to do is grab a big old slice of pizza, so she'll be one happy woman when this thing touches down a few minutes from now, Chef. We're watching all of this through the eyes and ears of Mission Control in Houston. Our Chris Gutierrez is there now. Chris, are they noticing any kind of problems whatsoever? Shepard, apparently everything right now is all a go, and they are happy with the way the orbiter is performing. Right now we're told the speeds are probably around 2,000 miles per hour as they uh, are now within our sight, Shepard. Uh, and to kind of reiterate what Trace was talking about, Sunny Williams, when, uh, when Sunny Williams actually lands uh, back here in, on Earth, she will become one of the most decorated female astronauts in all time, Shepard. Uh, she has conducted more time in space involving EVAs, that's a NASA's term for spacewalks, than any other female astronaut in history. Space Shuttle Atlantis launched six astronauts for its 28th flight and the 118th shuttle mission, and she's coming home. NASA TV will guide us in. Let's listen. All wind up A2J, all wind and 100 left, and four peak in the floor. All wind up A2J, all wind and 100 left, and four peak in the floor. All wind up A2J, all wind and 100 left. What we're watching now, clearly we have a dual audio feed. We're getting it, and then a half second later we're getting it again. But this picture, that is the nose camera that the astronauts are watching. Listen. You know what's happening here, this sound is looping and looping and looping again, and NASA Select sound is not what it could be today, but Tom Jones, man, I, I don't know if I've ever seen the thing this clear, it's gorgeous. It's a great shot of the orbiter coming in and now starting to bank towards the uh, runway. They do about a 270 degree, about a three quarters complete circle as they aim around towards uh, runway 22, and the two pilots up there, Rick Stirk out the commander flying manually now, and uh, uh, Brew Archambault in the right seat, the co-pilot, coaching him, keeping him on the numbers as he heads down towards the runway's inner glide slope. If a 747's landing, they can put it on autopilot. You could do that, and a shuttle has its own autopilot for landing, but it's never been flown in a real flight because it's a little bit more risky than the uh, regular orbiter computers are, and so they actually give it over to the, the hands of a skilled test pilot for each landing. And you're going to see some really skilled airmanship here as he brings this <laughs> brick uh, back down to a gentle landing with almost uh, an imperceptible touchdown sink rate. You know, some of us may have tried this in a little Cessna or in a boat. You know, it's hard enough in a boat. I managed to crash the dock, you know, nine times out of ten. Now, the big challenge here for the pilots is actually trying to keep their heads up and look out the front window through that heads-up display that we were just watching a few moments ago. The, the feeling of gravity, of deceleration, means that that helmet on your head is making you slump forward, and the pilots have to fight to keep their heads up. And as uh, uh, Trace uh, mentioned, uh, Sunny Williams is really feeling the, the deceleration the most. She's get, getting used to Earth gravity for the first time in more than six months. Adam Housley and at... at, uh, at uh Edwards Air Force Base, can you see the thing coming in? 
Yeah, Shepard, you can see the little speck in the sky. Obviously, our camera can't pick it up because it's not as strong as our eyesight is, but it's an amazing sight to see the little white speck coming across the sky. And as you were talking with Tom about uh, oh, maybe 35 seconds ago, you heard the, the double boom, the boom, boom, and the windows shook here at the National Aeronautics and Space Administration Dryden Research Center uh, at Edwards. And it was neat to see the windows shake and the, and the doors shake, and everybody gets a big smile on their face because they know that that shuttle is very close to coming in and making that landing on runway 22, Shepard. It comes in, by the way, at about 200. 25 miles an hour. Trace, Tom, Tom Jones, how dangerous is this? There's an element of risk because the shuttle is, as you mentioned, unpowered, and so they have one chance to make it right. And if you uh, run out of airspeed too early or you balloon on, in the landing, you could blow a tire on touchdown and, and go zooming off into the weeds. And you're talking about a $2 billion spaceship and, of course, six, uh, seven valuable crew members on board. So it's a very demanding piloting task, and especially when you've been weightless for two weeks. You have to fly precisely now um, uh, as you have in the simulator, but now you're doing it for real. Tom, NASA has fixed its audio feed, and we're watching what the pilots see on the nose cam. Let's listen to NASA TV. One minute to touch down. Tom, they're mighty quiet coming in here. Well, they don't say anything over the radio. They're focusing on flying the ship. And, of course, mission control keeps quiet as well so as not to distract them. Right now you're getting your guidance cues where to aim from the computers, but it's hand-flown by Rick Sturkow in the left seat of the Orbiter Atlantis. And he, this he is really an exciting time. He looks like he's pitching that nose up, and there comes the landing gear. The gear come out at about 400 feet above the ground. How fast? 400 feet above the ground at about 250 miles an hour. Any gear is down and locked. And now he just tries to flare just above the runway and bleed off the airspeed to about 200 knots. Main gear touchdown. And there you go. What a sight, isn't it? Nose gear touchdown. Big smiles on everybody's faces on board. Atlantis rolling out on runway 22 at Edwards Air Force Base, wrapping up a 5.8 million mile mission. Atlantis completing its 28th mission, leaving the International Space Station with more power generation capability and bringing home Expedition 15 astronaut Sonny Williams after 195 days in space. You know, we, we watch these things, and some of us have been down and watched them come, go up and come down in Florida, and it just seems so routine. And if you, if you sit back and think about it for a minute, we just sent people up into space again. And we've gotten to where we do it with such regularity that it's just, it's just sort of a passing mention. Tom, it's, it's truly astounding. When I landed at uh, Edwards six years ago on Atlantis, there was no question in my mind that we had just pulled off something that was amazing. And I think these crew members feel the same way. We'll stop. Atlantis, Houston, copy, we'll stop. Welcome back. Congratulations on a great mission. Good job installing the S3, S4, continuing to expand the space station in preparation for adding uh, modules from more of our international partners and stepping stones for the rest of the NASA exploration plan. Well, that was very corporate. Hey, Tom, do they feel weird now? I mean, there's gravity all of a sudden. Oh, that's right, and they've been feeling that on the way back down, but now it's actually hit home, and you feel, Shepard, like you're wearing a lead suit, and it's going to take all of their muscle effort to get out of those suits. Okay, we're with you on page 5-3. I wish they could just come down a come down a jetway, a gangway there, and wave to everybody, you know. <laughs> and that's true. They'll be out in about 45 minutes or an hour, and you actually have a couple technicians who help you stand up when you come through the hatch, and then you can sort of... Uh, wobble your way into a nice barco lounger and take your ease for a while. <laughs> Is the heat still radiating off that thing or does it calm down pretty quickly? It does. It actually radiates for about an hour afterwards. It's absorbed a lot of the heat from re-entry and now it's just sort of like an oven with the door open. And as it, that heat dissipates in the air, you can still feel it when the crew walks around about an hour from now. Huh.